The war between the All Progressive Congress National Chairman Adam Sushomole and Governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has definitely not come to an end, as the governor has threatened to expel the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress if he continues to undertake disruptive activities in the state Edo APC. When will this war end? And is the welfare of the Edo State people being put into consideration at all? I still have my guest with me, public affairs analyst Mokta Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you for staying. Okay. Two elephants are fighting in Edo State. That happens to be your home that state. That happens to be my state. <laughs> okay. So let's look at it this way. The governor has not threatened. He has actually said that the national chairman has been expelled from the party and if he's not, um, has been suspended rather, and if he's not careful, he will be expelled from the party. Let me start from there before we go to other areas. Does he have the power to do that? It's laughable. <laughs> Because um, he does well, you could say that according to the constitution of APC, you 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 go as well. If you want to suspend a national chairman, he start from the ward level of his of, of his um, party and his local government, and also is even as long as his local government. And you first of all start with your local government, so you belong to the ward level of your local government, not even the local government at the ward level, which happens to be like the counselling level of your local government. And if you look at that, then you know that even with this now, Oshomole has been suspended by the ward level of his council in his local government, but you need to look at it as a fraction. It's a faction in Edo State. So one faction is suspending, while other faction is saying, no, you're still the chairman. It's laughable because um, I don't know how it works for the, um, for the national chairman of the party to actually be expelled by the governor of Edo State. I, I, I think it's a fight that is going, um, is going out of hand. Unfortunately, I think the, the, the APC national level and the APC state level seems not to have any, any magic much to stop this um, state of um, problem between the, 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 the national chairman and the government of the governor of Edo State, unfortunately. Yeah, he, he was there for a rally a couple of days ago, and the state governor is saying that the, the government is saying that there is a ban on rally and he is disrupting the peace. Again, I ask, what is going on with you know the government? Do they have the right, actually? Because we have a former commissioner in that country that is saying that it is against the constitution to stop people from having a public rally. Yes, is, remember the, the legal side of that. You know, I think that message was brought in by Ghani Farmi some time ago where the, the Supreme Court gave out that everybody has freedom of association, freedom of speech, as long as you can hold rally. You even don't need to take permission from the police to hold any rally. Constitutionally, you don't need to take permission from the police to hold any rally. Now, looking at that, but when you look at political rallies, it's a different ball game because we're made to know that you are not supposed to do any political rally after an election. There's a particular time, <coughs> excuse me, there's a particular time whereby rallies are supposed to, 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 to there's be There's an explanation that they are given, though, not from the Obaseki faction. Uh, the Oshomole faction is saying that it is a, 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 an event to welcome people who were decamping from the PDP to the APC. It's just a show of power. And you, if, you, if you look at it, um, Oshomele wanted to do the such thing in, in Benin, Edo State, which happened to be where Obaseki comes from. You remember the rally he wanted to do to welcome um, Isai Yamu yeah, yeah. to the party. That rally, he, got, he thought he had the approval, it was going to be a big rally, but even the IG itself stopped that rally from going on. And I remember Oshomele was so upset, and why he thought the IG was partisan. That was in the area of control of Obaseki. Now, where this rally actually happened, happened to be the local government in Esako, where Adam Oshomole comes from. And remember also that anytime there's a brow in Esako, Adam Oshomole seems not to accuse Obaseki. He seems to accuse the, the deputy governor, mm, um, Shaibu, yeah. for that. So, so it's, it's in a, a, when it comes to the Esako side, it's a political struggle because between the deputy governor Shaibu and Adam Oshomole. When it comes to the, the era in Benin also, <laughs> unfortunately, it's still the struggle between Obaseki and um, um, Adam Oshomole. Now, Adam Oshomole is looking for a way. That's why he's bringing uh, uh, Sao Yamu 
into the picture to be that it's going to be a war of war between Osayamu and uh, Obaseki. It's all politics a, a, a power play. But considering the fact that Oshamola is not just um, a comrade um, that is in um, Edo State, he is the national chairman. Um, I think that's, that's the word. Yeah. National chairman of the APC. He should be the one that is bringing everybody together. So what worries you about this particular situation in a Edo State? Does it undermine what the APC claim that they are building? I don't think APC is building anything. If you watch, um, remember even the governor of Plateau State said it of recently, Dalong, that he, he doesn't think APC will survive after Buhari is out of power. So it seems to be the unifying factor of APC happened to be President Mohamed Buhari. There seems to be a party that has not got its act together. It seems to go different way today is the governor Oshomole. Remember before now, even the governor's forum of the APC wanted Oshomole sack as the chairman of the APC. It took the intervention of the president for Oshomole to still be the national chairman of APC. So when you look at it that way, you realize that Adam Oshomole seems to be losing grip of the party itself because it has been proven all over that the governors are the most powerful people in any party. So, and as it stands now, most governors are not in supportive of Adam Oshomole's way of leadership. And most of this government have made this known publicly and also even to the president. Remember, recently he had war of war with even the then governor of Imo State, Rochas Okorocha, when he was a member of APC. So it, it, it has been a fight that Oshomole, I, I don't think he has the backing of, of, the, of the APC leadership hierarchy. Is this thing not distracting? Because there are other, he has other, um, um, uh, should I say, constituents across the country that should be getting his attention. Isn't the drama in his home state a distraction from his responsibility as well? You need to look at it that if you become the national chairman of a party, why you, you become the, the, the boss of all APC all over the, all over the country? Not just the state. You need to ask your, You need to begin to ask questions. Why is Oshomole having problem in Edo State, which should be his base, because of his leadership style? Remember, I keep saying it. You, you, you don't buy the finger that feed you. Um, Guys of Basaki came through the system that he's fighting now, unfortunately. So that shows you that there's a fundamental problem: the system. And remember that Adam Oshomole has fought this system to stand still. And that system I'm talking about is the system of godfatherism. Uh, but wouldn't you say that's exactly what is playing out? That's now. what is playing out. And that's why the governor now and the deputy governor is saying, the deputy governor, especially who happened to be the foot soldier of Adam Oshomole, is saying everything I'm fighting against, he taught me that. <laughs> All right, let's, let's look at another aspect of this. Now, Obasaki has said um, uh, in a statement when he was talking to council uh, chairman, um, he said something uh, to the effect that um, Comrade Oshomole stands suspended from the party and in due course will expel him if he does not behave. Where I want your attention is the party does not belong to him. It belongs uh, to all of us. And he also said something about him being the governor and he's going to show him uh, that uh, he is the governor. governor. Where I'm going to is the response by the immediate past deputy whip of the State House of Assembly, uh, Pali. And uh, he's describing the governor's comments as repressive and jackboot politics. And he also wondered why it is that uh, re receiving defectors of a party is seen to be flouting a uh, government um, rules. What's Ac your reaction? According to the according to the constitution or according to the political, whether it's their constitution, whether it's their manifesto, the leader of the party in the state is the governor of the state. So if you are going to receive any Defectors. detected from any party, the governor of the state, who is the leader of the party, should be there. That is what he said. That's, that's how it's played. Remember that APC as itself cannot, in Edo State cannot stand without the financial support of the governor. And that is why the government, if the governor, if you look at what he was saying, he said they didn't have a befitting secretary when Oshomole was the governor. He has given them a befitting secretary now. So you see that he is the leader of the party in the state. That even if it comes to the national level, when they, maybe they want to go for a national convention, 
is the leader of the party of the state. He has more power in the state than Adam Oshomole. What is the likely outcome? Do you, what, what likely outcome do you see in this drama? Oh. Because it, do, it seems to have been dragging for quite a while. Uh, and the Edo people, you happen to be one. What is your fate? Why I think the Edo people are enjoying the drama. Because really? what is happening now is that um, Gaius Obasaki has to work to impress the Edo people, knowing that he doesn't have the backing of the national chairman of the party, who is Adam Oshomole. So he needs the backing of the ordinary Edo people to be able to so even So you're win. basically saying that it's a good thing for... It's a good thing because... Um, um, it's a good thing to advantage of Edo people because um, Gaius Obasaki is not the normal politician. It's a technocrat that was brought in into politics. So he doesn't have the political crowd like the full soldiers. So that's where the deputy governor held switch for him. So it's good for the Edo people because the governor of Basaki now have to win the people of Edo State, the, the really? majority of people of Edo State, for, for him to be able to be in power. But is he doing that with this distraction? Isn't he distracted as it stands now? I think if you look at the area of development, if you've been to Edo State or recent, you will say that he's not, he, 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 maybe he could have done better without this. But I think he's doing, he's doing the bit that he can, and he's doing a little bit fairly better for the Edo people. I think so. I'm afraid that's where we'll have to stop for now. Thank you very much for coming on the program tonight. It's a pleasure being here. Right. We'll go on a short break for our plus report. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. The federal lawmakers from Plateau State are accusing the federal government of turning a blind eye as lives and property are lost on the plateau on a daily basis. They say despite these killings which have been ongoing for several years, no corporate have been brought to book, a situation which has become worrisome. Recently, two girls were shot in the market and killed, um, aged between 19 and 12 and about four are also receiving treatment in the hospitals. And these have continued. Sometimes people will go to the farm and they won't come back. We'll be looking for them and after days, they will find their cop somewhere. And these have continued. Government does not only seem complacent, but also condoning these hoodlums and probably protecting them by dealing with the issues with kid gloves. Because no single prosecution of those arrested over the years, no categorical statement and policy to fight this menace to finish. Even when killer hatsmen were designated and referred to as the fourth most dangerous terrorist gang in the world, our government didn't classify them as such. The lawmakers are calling on President Muhammadu Buhari to take the bull by the horn and do the needful. They are also calling on the international community to come to their aid. We call on Mr. President to show sincerity and commitment, to march words with actions, to secure all Nigerians wherever they are. And as Commander-in-Chief, he should provide security agencies with modern equipment, resources, and the political will to make them succeed in this venture. We call also on the international community to save our people from being extinct, going by the numbers killed every day, which is alarming and is a cause for concern. Amadin Ui, Plus TV Africa. Doing the same thing over time without a tweak in tactic would yield the same result, and to expect something different is insanity. These were the words of the House of Representatives member, Abubakar Fulata. It is imperative that President Muhammad Buhari heed advice and let the service chiefs go. Fresh ideas are needed in the management of the country's security situation. Besides that, the resignation or removal will allow for the promotion of other deserving officers and armed forces. 
a lot has been said already, even tonight, by our guests. I urge Mr. President to listen and prioritize the country's security over any other interest that he may have. And that's how we wrap things up tonight. Thank you for watching and see you next time.